And good morning. Welcome to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, you've come to the right place. We can help you. And we love hearing from you on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010. We'll get to your calls in our second segment. We're going to talk to Ilana Davidson in the bottom of the hour. Her ebook, Finding Your Own Happy, The Soul Searcher's Guide to Peace and Happiness in Everyday Life. Uh, we're going to talk about finding happiness in this crazy, in this corona crazy time that we are living in, this apocal historic time in human evolution. It's really an amazing time to be alive. Maybe not in a good way. Maybe in a good way, but maybe not in a good way. Alana Davidson has a Facebook page, a uh, private Facebook page. If you're interested in checking it out, just uh, Google or go to Find Your Own Happy on Facebook. We'll talk to Alana about her book, Finding Your Own Happy. At the bottom of the hour, we'll get your calls next segment, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase your Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 and ask about joining the Brightside Ben team and starting yourself a longevity business. If you're on the bubble about uh, starting a home-based business, about starting about being involved with network marketing, you at least owe it to yourself to check it out. This is a time when we want to take our not only our our uh, our, our personal uh, personal health challenges or personal health lives into our own uh, in, into our own homes and into our own families and take care of it all ourselves. We also want to take care of our financial well-being all by ourselves. You don't want to depend on a boss. You don't want to depend on a job. You don't want to have to worry about pink slips and punching a clock. And home-based business is such an amazing way to make money, especially when it involves nutrition and especially when it involves changing lives to the extent that longevity products change lives. Call 866-735-2470 for more information or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com. We have now going on 500 five-star reviews, 96 or 97% of our reviews are four or five stars. Just got another one today. Great results, great way to try different products. At first, I was surprised how small this was. Then I realized all you need to get results is a tiny bit. You shouldn't have to put a lot of skincare products in your skin, by the way, people. I love I love over-applying products, uh, Alexandra says. This is from Alexandra F. But with this, you don't need to. I'm shocked at how fast it has been helping my skin. The quality of the products is superb. My lines are slowly diminishing. I feel I found a very special line of products that will be part of my everyday routine forever. I am glad they have this set to try different products on their line. Highly recommend getting it. Uh, Alexandra is referring to our sample pack, which is $50, and you get to try uh, five different Truth Skin Health products for $50. It'll last you about two or three weeks, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, I could tell you all day long about how these are different. I could tell you all day long about how you have not experienced the kind of potency that you're going to experience with these kinds of products because I took all the water out and the silicon and the fillers and the vegetable oil. It makes so much 95% sometimes of a skin health product. I took them all out. And I left behind just the active and functional ingredients. What that means is you get powerful effects with small doses. And these are the kinds of reviews that I just read that we get every day. Now you just go on our treat, go on our website and look up testimonials. You'll see review after review after review after review. I'm not kidding, folks. You have not experienced skin care products like this. And I understand if you're skeptical, I, I would be skeptical too. But the power of 100% active and functional is unheard of. The power of 100% active and functional is something I can't tell you about. You have to experience. You can check out all our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, Alana Davidson coming up at the bottom of the hour. We'll get your calls next segment, 844-236-6010. I did my moment of truth today on cortisol. There was an article I read yesterday from the Lancet that talked about um, patients who had elevated cortisol were more likely to suffer from complications from viral infections. And you know the viral infection I'm talking about. Not only more complications, not only symptoms, but mortality. The higher the cortisol levels, the more likely they were, uh, uh, COVID-infected patients were to, be, uh, were to die. 
and end up in intensive care, end up, end up with horrible symptoms. All of this is to say that instead of running away from the environment, running away from viruses and bacteria and microbes that are filled with our, that our environment is filled with, let's protect ourselves. Let's work on our own biochemistry, and it starts with the uh, cortisol. It starts with the adrenal glands. After, once cortisol levels are elevated chronically, once we're under chronic long-term stress, guess what? Thyroid, hypothyroidism follows. There's two kinds of hypothyroidism. You've got primary hypothyroidism and you have secondary hypothyroidism. Primary hypothyroidism involves the thyroid directly, Hashimoto's thyroid or, or um, um, autoimmune diseases of the thyroid, hypo, autoimmune hypothyroidism, which is the major cause of hypothyroidism, by the way. That's primary thyroid, uh, hypothyroidism. Secondary is when it involves the adrenal glands, adrenal fatigue. And adrenal fatigue is really, really common. One of the ways you can tell you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues is if you suffer from something called postural hypotension. P, uh, uh, postural hypotension, which now they have a, another, uh, they actually have a, a, a syndrome, a complex of symptoms they call postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS, P-O-T-S. Postural refers to your posture. Orthostatic refers to... Uh, uh, movement in the body, and then tachycardia is a fast heart rate. POTS is when your heart rate move gets really your heart rate gets really elevated when you move your body a certain way, when you change your posture. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome POTS. I mean, you don't have to have a full blown syndrome. You could just be bending down and standing up and feel woozy or dizzy, or you can just get up at a, out of a seated position or out of bed, out of a lying down position and feel dizzy. If that happens to you, you're dealing with an adrenal problem. If you're craving salt, by the way, likely you're dealing with an adrenal problem. If you're tired, even though you had a long night's sleep, uh, a good night's sleep, or if um, you, you feel really tired at night, but you can't fall asleep, chances are you're dealing with an adrenal problem. And these are incredibly incredibly common. And the reason this is important is because if you're dealing with hypothyroidism that's associated with the adrenal glands, there's nothing you could do directly by treating the thyroid. That's, this is why thyroid problems are so frustrating for the modern medical model, because it tries to treat the organ, but the problem isn't at the level of the organ. In the case of secondary hypothyroidism, it's, it's at the level of the adrenal glands. And in the case of primary hypothyroidism, it's more than likely at the level of the digestive system. It's rare that the thyroid itself is directly the cause of hypothyroidism. That's why they give you Synthroid. They give you Synthroid because there's nothing they could do except give you some extra hormone. And Synthroid is notoriously ineffective because it doesn't treat the thyroid. It doesn't treat the cause. It just gives you a little extra thyroid hormone. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Ilana Davidson. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll get to your phone calls next segment. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, and thanks for joining us. We got Alana Davidson coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk happy. Her ebook, uh, where is her ebook here? It's Finding Your Own Happy. That's an interesting title about finding your own joy and your own enthusiasm for living, finding your own happy and finding your own energy to pursue your dreams. Alana Davidson will be with us at the bottom of the hour. We'll get your calls this segment, 844-236-6010. If we have phone calls, 844-236-6010. All right, so we're talking about the thyroid and the adrenal glands. Uh, dealing, with a, dealing with a thyroid, job number one, work on your digestive system. Job number two, work on the blood sugar system. And job number three, work on adrenal health. And they're all kind of connected because when you work on your digestive system, not only are you going to be taking care of your, of your thyroid, but you'll also be taking care of your blood sugar, and you'll also be probably lowering your cortisol levels. There's an important relationship between food toxicity and food allergies and elevated cortisol levels. In fact, you can actually do your own food allergy testing by checking your pulse a half hour or 20 minutes after you eat a food, or even less sometimes. Anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes after you eat a food that's a problem for you, your pulse will race. This is a, a classic uh, home-based technique for checking for food allergies or food issues. The reason this happens is because your body goes under, by, from a biochemical perspective, your body goes into a situation, a, a biochemical posture of duress when you eat the wrong food. Eating the wrong food is behind 
really, the, I mean, I know I talk about this all the time, and, and sometimes I get letters from folks saying, why do you and Dr. Wallach always talk about the digestive system? Why are you always talking? Sometimes with Doc, when he goes on coast to coast, he always talks about gluten, right? And I always get these letters, everything's gluten intolerance. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything's gluten intolerance, but I will tell you everything's related to the digestive system. It's really as simple as that. And when we doubt the simplicity of the relationship between digestive health and overall health, what we're doing is we're missing our, a point of leverage, a powerful point of leverage, a power point in controlling the body. When we poo-poo the idea that the digestive system is behind everything or breakdowns in the digestive system or food issues, anything to do with food or digestion, when we, when we marginalize the importance of the relationship between digestive health and food, food issues and every single other health challenge, when we say that's too simplistic, when we say that's too easy, when we say that's too simple-minded, we miss a powerful way to control our health, we miss a powerful way to increase our longevity, and we miss a powerful way to improve the quality of our lives, for our whole lives. And you can experience this for yourself if you're symptomatic in any way. You can experience this for yourself if you're symptomatic in any way by fasting. Even something as simple as caloric restriction. You know, we eat so much more. Think about this. We eat so much more than we need to eat. Try this experiment next time. Next time you're really, really hungry. In fact, go the whole day without eating. Go two days without eating. When you're really, really, really hungry, make yourself really hungry. The hungriest you can imagine being. Make yourself that hungry. And then put a plate of food in front of you. And then tr eat the food. And notice how long it takes you for, to not be really hungry. And I guarantee you it's going to be less than four bites. Take your, the worst hunger you've ever had and in four bites you're going to feel satisfied. That's the amount of food we need. And everything after that is not only excess food, it's excess work. It's excess work for the body to digest, uh, excess work for the digestive system to, to do. It's excess digestive work that has to happen. And most importantly, this is so important what I'm going to say right now, the more calories you eat, the more calories we eat, the more nutrition we lose. Our food does not replace the nutrition that it costs us to use to digest the food. So we're negative. This is, this is really, in a nutshell, is why we're so sick, even though we have so much food. This is why we're so malnourished, even though why we have so much food. This is why we are the starving obese as a culture. I'm not talking about every single person. But as a culture, we are the starving obese because our, our food... Our calories cost us nutrition. And by the way, this is why a nutritional supplement program is so important. This is why you want to do your nutritional supplements with your food. This is why people lose weight and feel less hungry when they start a nutritional supplement program. It's one of the first things that happens. Just with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, in fact, I'm not telling you it's a weight loss product, but it's a weight loss product. I'm not telling you it's designed for weight loss, but it'll help you lose weight. Because it will keep you from eating so much. Because your body will get the nutrients it needs without the calories. Something as simple as reducing your caloric intake can take a major load off of the adrenal glands. Because just by eating salad, it doesn't have to even be a bad food. Just by eating salad, your body goes into a stress response. It goes into what's called postprandial. Prandial means eating. Postprandial inflammation. Postprandial inflammation typically occurs with things like fats and harder to process foods, but it can occur with anything. The inflammatory system is the defense system, and think about it. What is the major source of attack for every human being multiple times a day? For the vast majority of human beings multiple times a day, the major source of attack is food. So the body has evolved a system where as soon as you eat food, your immune system, your inflammatory system, your defensive system wakes up. It sparks up. And the more food you eat, the more that happens. And the more often you eat, the more that happens, which is, by the way, why the, one of the silliest things you'll hear from nutritionists and healthcare professionals and people who should know better sometimes is that you're supposed to eat all day long. They don't say it as much. I haven't heard that nonsense as much in the past few years. But they used to tell you all the time, graze. Eat throughout the day. Eat small amounts throughout the day. I can think of no dumber thing for an alternative healthcare professional to say than to eat all day long. And in fairness, they don't say it as much anymore. 
But if we graze and we snack and we eat all day long, we're going to be in a chronic state of emergency, of inflammation, and by the way, ultimately chronic hypoglycemia, because as your blood sugar goes, when your blood sugar goes up, it goes back down, and that's a major cause of adrenal duress all on its own. So digestive issues, blood sugar issues, and then working on the adrenal glands directly, which is possible, calming the body down. These are all strategies for keeping your thyroid healthy. Now, there's also nutrients that you can take, and I encourage you to check out my Moment of Truth today. Um, Moments of Truth are all available on our Facebook page, The Bright Side with Pharmacist Ben. I talked about some strategies for dealing with uh, adrenal duress issues. I didn't talk about it as it regards the thyroid. I talked about it as it regards viral infections, but all of those strategies that I discussed for um, for keeping your adrenal glands, uh, for, for keeping the stress response at bay or make, keeping your adrenal glands healthy all involve the thyroid as well because the thyroid, oftentimes thyroid disease, is secondary to adrenal dysfunction. All right. I didn't mean to babble on there too long. I, I want to get some calls. We'll just uh, see if we can get one call in here. Shauna from Idaho, what is going on? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Oh, I just remember how you saved me on my leg when I did a three-day fast, and it turned my body around and cleared it up. Okay, I remember that. I on. I am, that? I'm, I'm hearing of these restriction bands that you blow up. You put them on your bicep, and then you put two around your thighs, one on each side. Yeah. And when you exercise, uh-huh, it's more like resistance. working out for 20 minutes, yeah. but you only have to work out for five because in uh-huh. a sense, this restriction flow to the it's more res- You get more resistance. Enough. Yeah, you get more resistance. I don't know about that ratio, but you definitely get more resistance when you do it. It's a Is great that strategy. Harmful on the body you, to no. nature. No, it's a great strategy. Uh, you know, that's a. Oh. Can you call back tomorrow? I mean, I hate to do this to you. I know I always do it, but but try and call back tomorrow. We'll get you. We'll get you real quick in our second segment because that's a great question. Resistance bands. All right, we got Alana Davidson. Thanks, John. I appreciate your call. Alana Davidson coming up next. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. Also on benfuchsarchives.com. We have a search engine up at benfuchsarchives.com. Longevity products can be purchased at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470 for more info. we got good... Uh, lots of good health information, lots of free health information, videos and news, uh, news stories and blog posts up at pharmacistben.com. Thank you to Robert for setting that one up, uh, brightsideben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, all com- formulated in my compounding pharmacy, designed to heal wounds, but they beautify the skin. Beautification is healing. Healing is beautification. Healing the skin makes your skin beautiful, and that's the story behind all our Truth Skin Health products are designed to heal, but they beautify the skin better than any skin health products you'll ever use. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, oil, 100% active, and functional ingredients, all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, I'm looking forward to speaking to our guest, Ilana Davidson, is the author of an ebook, Finding Your Own Happy, The Soul Searcher's Guide to Peace and Happiness in Everyday Life. Ilana is a... Uh, I guess you could say she's a happiness coach. She calls herself a mental health and happiness coach. And uh, she helps people deal uh, deal with chronic feelings of unhappiness and depression so they can connect with their joy. I love that. Their joy, inherent joy, built-in joy, and enthusiasm for living. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Alana Davidson. Hey, Alana. Hi. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you, and thanks for writing your book. Thanks for motivating to write your book, Finding Your Own Happiness. The key part of that title, Ilana, and I want to talk about that, is not the happy, it, and it's not the finding. It's your own, and the idea that happiness is within us, because I've always found it interesting and ironic and unfortunate that we attach happiness to events and experiences and things that have, have to happen to us, but you, you say finding your own happy. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and elaborate on the your own part of finding happiness? Sure. I mean, many of us throughout our lives are searching for the things outside of ourselves that we think are going to make us happy, and oftentimes uh, they don't, right? Or you find something that gives you momentary happiness, and then you're on to the next thing. Um, So finding your own happy is about connecting with 
your own sense of well-being, your own sense of peace, your own sense of harmony, no matter what is happening in your life, no matter what life throws at you. Sometimes life is hard. Sometimes life is challenging. But you can connect with your own inner sense of happiness, even despite whatever might be going on in your life. Well, now, everybody wants to be happy. And you make it sound so darn easy. You know, it's right there. Why don't you just plug into it? And everybody wants to be happy. So, so what's up? Why are we all depressed and suicidal and hating life? Not all of us, but why is there so, many, right. so much depression when it's right there and you make it sound so easy? Just find your own happiness. What's the block? Well, there's a few things. And one of them is the subconscious. So a lot of the reasons that people who are searching for happiness, trying to overcome their challenges, maybe even suicidal level depression, is that their subconscious blocks and issues that they haven't been able to identify or address that keep them stuck in old patterns and old ways of being um, in stories that are not contributing to their happiness. And when you learn how to work with and address the subconscious, then it can free you. I've literally gone from feeling super depressed, maybe even like I wanted to die, to feeling like I got my whole life back, my energy, my vitality, my enthusiasm for living just by looking at and working out what was the subconscious story or belief that I was holding that was making me feel like I didn't want to live anymore. Okay, so when I hear you say that, you said subconscious. That means it's, mm-hmm. you're not conscious of it. So how do you right. work with something you're not conscious of? Yep, so there's a process of being able to bring the um, the subconscious into the conscious. So uh, you can start by asking yourself some deep questions, like what is it that I'm not willing to see here? What am I avoiding uh, seeing? I, sometimes I just say, okay, life, universe, whatever, like I want to see everything. Please show me what I'm not getting. And then be open and receptive to the answer. I also work with a tool called transformational kinesiology, which is a way to tap into the body's wisdom where a lot of your subconscious beliefs can be accessed. And so that has been an instrumental tool for me and helping me understand what is going on below the surface that I'm not immediately aware of. So when I hear you say kinesio- kinesiology, transformational yeah. kinesiology, I'm thinking mm-hmm. muscle testing. Is that right? Is that the yes. same idea? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so, so transformational kinesiology is a, is a form of kinesiology that involves mes- muscle testing and is designed to work a lot with the, with the psyche, with your psychology, and also with your subconscious patterns and beliefs. Okay, so when I hear muscle testing, I think of the guy, somebody standing with their arms straight up, in a, uh, acro- yes, uh, straight across yes. their body kind of thing, and you push the arms out. Can people do this on their own? Yes, you can. You can learn how to muscle test yourself. And actually, in my work, I train my clients to be able to muscle test on themselves so that they can start to really sort out all of the confusing emotions and experiences and so forth that are going on for them, and they can understand it at a deeper level. and at a subconscious level. So you can ask a question and then muscle mm-hmm. test the answer? Yep, or you make a, it's more like you make a statement. So one of the things that, that keeps people from being happy is we're often identified with, so when you're in your life going along and you're connected to the present moment, usually you're happy. Usually you have a sense of peace and well-being. What takes us out of that is being pulled back into the past or Mm. into fears and worries about the future. So one Mm. of the muscle tests that I, one of the very basic ones I teach is to help people understand whether or not they're identified with themselves in the present moment. And if they're not, where they are identified and what they need to do in order to unhook from, so let's say I'm identified with being five years old right now. Something happened and it took me back to being five. And I have all these feelings going along with it. Well, I teach people how to, first of all, identify where they went, what's going on there, and then how to bring themselves back to the present and function from the present. Because my experience is when you're functioning from the present, then life is usually pretty good and, and, and flows pretty well. It's, I say life is a gift when you're functioning from the present, cause that's, and that's why they call it the present. Because it's a gift, right? And, right? <laughs> exactly. And it's all, You're open and, it's all, and receptive to receiving the gift of life. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we're not, it's funny because it's only when, like, disaster strikes that we all of a sudden start get back into the present. It's almost like we need disasters to get us back in the present, do you think? There is a, there, I mean, certain people definitely function well under crisis and disaster, yeah. and when, when things get intense, yes, you have to focus very, um, very precisely on what's in front of you, right? When yeah. you're in crisis, you're dealing with a crisis. There's no time and no room to ruminate about all these other things going on in your life. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie so Fight Club? I have not. Oh, you should see it. Hey, we got to take a commercial break. I want to talk to you about your personal story because you, you speak from experience here. I want to talk to you a little, bit, a little bit about that when we come back from our break. We're talking to Alana Davidson. Her book is Finding Your Own Happy, her website, findingyourownhappy.com. I am Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the bright side with Alana Davidson right after this. Side. I am pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Ilana Davidson. Her book is finding her ebook is finding your own happy, and you can get it at findingyourownhappybook.com. Uh, she can also email Ilana at Ilana at healingmindsandhearts.com, and she also has a Facebook page, Heal Minds, uh, Heal Minds and Hearts, and her website is healingmindsandhearts.com. Hey, Ilana. So uh, you have a degree actually in. Human social dynamics, which I find very interesting. Does that mean all of your relationships are really perfect and wonderful? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what to do, right? No? Well, I, I'm just kidding. You know, I was being the, facetious. Of course. And well, it's funny because I used to really struggle with relationship, and I think about why would you go to someone for help in relationships who just has it easy and... Um, it's like you just do it. So unless you've been through the struggle and come out the other side, you might not understand for other people what the struggle is like, right? If something just comes mm. easy to you, it's hard to understand why it could be a struggle to someone else. Same mm -hmm. with happiness, right? If you are never struggled with depression, then um, you're not going to get what it's like for someone who's really in the deep darkness of that experience. Okay, so you, you have actually had, you've gone through all this stuff. So you, you're speaking from experience, from personal experience. What Absolutely. is it, what is it I, like? I mean, this sound, might sound like a silly question to some people, but how can you describe from a, from a, a uh, academic point of view, from a scientist's or, or a, a, a researcher's point of view, which you are, you're kind of a researcher of happiness, how would you describe depression from a researcher's point of view? Well, that's an interesting question. I would say there are many, many different ways that depression shows up and experiences and types of depression, and each of those types of depression has a different source or different cause. I say that you're never depressed for no reason. You just might not understand or know what that reason is. So there's depression that you're weepy and sad all the time. That's a certain mm. kind of depression. There's depression where... You're lethargic and you don't want to do anything. You don't want to get out of bed. There's depression where you feel suicidal. That's a different kind of depression. There's a depression where you just mostly just lost your motivation for living. So having been through depression for so many years of my life, I can give you very nuanced descriptions yeah. of all of these different types. And that's the thing. People just think depression is depression, but really... Mm -hmm. The experience of depression can be a wide spectrum of different things. So, so what is it, first of all, why did you wake up out of your depressive trance, if you will? And what did it take to wake you up from that depressive tra trance? What, what motivated you to do it, and what did you actually do? Well, what motivated me is, depending on the day, sometimes I don't, just don't want to suffer anymore. I also decided at some point in my life, you know what, I'm not going to take my own life. So if I'm going to stay on planet Earth, I better figure out how to make it work for me and not be full of pain and suffering. And I wish I could say that there was one magical thing that changed it all and got me out of it. But really, it was many years of searching and work on myself and then a whole bunch of little things that 
I brought together that finally made the difference. And that's a lot of what I talk about in my book, Finding Your Own Happy, is all of the different pieces that came together for me to transform my experience. And we talked about one of them already, which is uh, the subconscious stuff that's going on. Another big piece that I see over and over again with people I talk with is they have unresolved and unhealed trauma from their childhood that is playing a big part in their depression. And part of why that trauma is still there is that they were never allowed to have an emotionally appropriate response to what happened to them. And when they do, it's amazing just the shifts and transformation I see happen when people are finally allowed to cry about something or finally allowed to be angry about the abuse that happened and just the way that that can allow them to move forward and let it go. Do you have to go back to that time or can you just do it right now? Or do you have to re-experience it? Do you actually have to go back there or is that just a waste? You don't have to re-experience it, but it's like what I have found over and over again that most of us are carrying some hurt little girl or boy inside of ourselves that is longing to be seen and to be heard and to be loved. And it can be a very quick process, but you go back to one little point in time, and this is also working with the subconscious, but you maybe pinpoint in this moment um, where something pivotal happened, and you're reconnecting with that child part of yourself that never got to be acknowledged and has carried that hurt pretty much. I mean, I talk to people in their 50s and 60s who are carrying around pain and hurt that they've mm. had since they were five years old. Okay, and they've now when never you s- had the avenue to let it go. Now, when you say reconnect, what does that mean? To actually so, like identify with it or talk to it? or uh, how do you, What does that mean, reconnect? Uh, all of the above. So, you know, we go back and look at what was this what were the dynamics going on in that situation what happened to that little part of yourself what maybe like so maybe you felt really lonely or you felt really hurt maybe you took on a limiting belief at that time and we reconnect so it's it's a little bit of an imagination but imagining what did your five-year-old self really need at that moment that they didn't get What did nobody understand about you in that moment? What do you need to hear? What do you need to tell yourself in order to have some healing around this issue? And so it can be, yeah, go ahead. Do you think you need a certain degree of self-awareness to do that? Or is everybody capable of doing that? I think there is a certain degree of self-awareness. And I think that process is often really helpful when you have a facilitator and have someone that can support you in it. Uh, Part of being able to have an emotionally appropriate response to what happened to you is whether or not you have an empathic witness, somebody who Mm. could, especially as a child, somebody who could hold your pain. Because as a kid, if something happens to you that is painful and there's no one there to comfort you and give you empathy, um, then you are going to internalize that and stuff it because, especially if it's it's a a caregiver that has been the source of your harm, you need to maintain that relationship with that person in order to survive. And so to be angry at them is to lose that attachment. And that's, that's super scary because it means you won't survive as a kid. So you're not able to have that experience. So part of having that emotionally appropriate response, even in adulthood, is to be able to have somebody who can stay connected with you through the process and give you that empathic understanding and care about what happened to you. You know, I'm listening to you speak and you sound like the perfect person to talk to about, about empathy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's all yeah, in your well, voice. I mean, if I, if I was going to have a ther- look for a therapist, I would find you, I would go to some, uh-huh, to you or somebody else you. like you. You sound yeah. great. Well, um, it, so- it is deeply, you know, it's deep, my deep own personal experience of having been there and having suffered and having not found the support that I was looking for for so many years, but sort of drives me to do the work that I do now because I know what it's like to be on that side of it. So what do people, how do they get a hold of you? If their listeners want to get a hold of you or people on YouTube who are listening want to get a hold um, of you? Yes. A, a great way to be connected with me is to join my Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group where I talk about these things. I do live videos. 
uh, weekly Q and A calls, and that is the group name of the group is Finding Your Own Happy, and you can find that on Facebook. It's just uh, Facebook backslash groups backslash Finding Your Own Happy. Um, so come join my group, and you get to hang out with me and my community, and uh, explore all these topics more in depth. I am personally going to be signing up as soon as I get off the air here. And then do you, do you actually talk to people? Do you actually talk to people one on one? Do you do like therapy sessions one on one? Yes. So my my program is a it's a mix of individualized coaching as well as training. So I'm teaching people how to do the work, how to do muscle testing, how to work with the subconscious, a whole bunch of other stuff. But really, I'm training them to be their own coach and to to facilitate themselves as well as doing the in-depth work of facilitating them as well. I, I love that. I love that. And this, they reach out to you at Ilana at HealingMindsAndHearts.com. Is that correct? Yes. You can also reach me there. That is my email. So. Okay. Ilana, E-L-A-N-A at HealingMindsAndHearts.com. I love your style. I love your voice. You sound like an awesome therapist. And uh, congratulations on the book. Keep up the good work, Ilana. Good to talk to you. Okay. Thank you. Right, Thanks take so much care. for having me. Take okay. care. That's Ilana Davidson. Her book is Finding Your Own Happy, The Soul Searcher's Guide to peace and happiness uh, in everyday life and the website is findingyourownhappinessbook.com that's all the time we have for today on the bright side thanks for listening have a beautiful wonderful awesome spectacular day i'll talk to you later folks bye for now